my darlings, hello. I hope that everybody is all raring to go for nano. Yes and no. I know that nano can be very intimidating for a lot of people who are just starting or people like us who have to work a full-time job yet still want to participate in nano. So that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about Preptober. The month of October is very lovingly called Preptober by those of us who indulge in nano every year. And it's a, you know, entire month of just getting ready to put in these words. It's no joke. It's no joke to be put in 50,000 words in 30 days, especially if you work a full-time job or have heavy family responsibilities or the gods forbid both. Um, it can be very, very difficult, but anything is possible when you're prepared properly. So that's what we're going to get into today. Now, I've been doing nano for four, four years. I did not participate last year, though, um, because my work was very, very busy. Um, we had a major uh, online event, and I did get myself all geared up. I went through Preptober. I was ready, or so I thought. And I missed out on some very important preparations. I had the meal plans done. I had all of my writing materials ready. I had sticky notes, and I had pens, and I had scene cards, and I was ready to write. But I didn't mentally prepare myself for it. Heck, I even had the buku snacks. I mean, like, I was ready to rock. Five days in, I missed a day because I was exhausted from work. And then I just gave up. I gave up. I didn't do the things that you should do. I didn't lean on my community, and I really should have. Because I know that I would have found what I needed in the Heart Breathings community and in my online community in general to reignite my passion for nano. So let's check my notes here because I don't want to miss anything. This is uh, this. I'm not sure how long this video is going to be. Please bear with me. It's like my first time doing this and I love you all to death. I, I'm so grateful that you're here watching this video and I hope you get some, some good tips out of it. So I think the number one thing about nano is you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it because everybody else is. You don't have to do 50,000 words. You can be a nano rebel and say, I'm plotting for nano, just like you would do for camp. Um, you can just not do it. I know lots of people who are like, yeah, it's not for me. It's too much pressure, you know, and that's okay. You can still have lots of fun with all of the stuff that goes on online, you know, the community and this sort of thing. And Preptober is to me, as much, if not more fun than, than actual nano. Uh, it's the planner in me. I love to prepare for it. And you can do all of that. And it's a lot of fun. So, you know, join your groups, join your, you know, even on the nano website, you know, join in, have fun. You don't have to have a 50,000 word count to enter into the spirit of nano sounds very, very cheesy, but it's the truth. It's the truth. So, I mean, if you're working full time, you have to be really realistic. Do you actually have the time to write 50,000 words in a month? A lot of people don't. I mean, especially if you have, you know, children or, or a spouse that depends on you or, you know, aging parents or anything, it's, you have to be realistic. And if being realistic means you don't do it at all, then there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But like I said, you can still have fun preparing for the month, still join in on the extra sprints that you see coming around. Um, we have some very interesting things coming up in the Heart Breathings group. Uh, keep your eyes out for that. I can't say anything. Promised my lips are sealed. But there's going to be some fun stuff coming up for Nano. And you can join in that even if you're not participating in Nano. We'd love to have you around. 
And then there's always the big thing of what do I do if I fall behind? Like what I did last year, I just gave up. What I should have done was taken a step back and reassessed my goals. It's like anything. It's like when you do, you know, you're, you, you plan out your quarter and you have all these grand plans and you do all the sticky notes and you've got Kanban boards already. And halfway through the quarter, you're like, crap, what have I done? Don't give up, step back, reassess, lean on your community, drop me an email. I'm more than happy to talk to you about it. This is the spirit of Nano. So how do we prepare for Nano? How do we spend our month? My first go-to, the first thing I do to get ready for Nano is download this workbook. There will be a link in the description for you to go join Sarah's, if I can get it in the camera here, you join Sarah's um, email list and get access to the library and go print off this workbook. This is the most concise workbook that I've seen her put out for Preptober. I'm not going to go through it because Sarah has a video coming out. I think the day after like this, I'm recording this video on Friday the 30th. It will go live on the 1st. And I believe Sarah has her walkthrough of this going live on Sunday the 2nd. I believe I might be wrong. It might be the 1st. Um, so I'm not going to go over it because Sarah's workbook, she can explain it a lot better than I am. I can. This is... This is my rock. This is every the foundation that I build Preptober on is this workbook. It's got everything in it that you would possibly need from word count trackers to meal planners to um, brainstorming uh, your, your plot. What book are you going to write? Trust me. Even if this was the only resource in her resource library, you need to join her mail list so you can get access to this. Plus you get all the fun emails from Sarah and she's always a lot of fun anyway. So, but I'd like to share with you the things that I do to get ready for Nano. So first and foremost, because I am so food motivated, let's talk about food. Most of us who work a full-time job are working like, you know, we work a nine to five, let's say using myself as an example my big thing is having an entire month's worth of meals planned out. And I know that sounds extreme, but I am also lucky enough to work from home. So like breakfast and lunch, I can just go get that whenever I need it. It's dinner that I have to plan because I'm doing most of my writing in the evenings. So I'm lucky enough as well that I have somebody in my home that will cook if I need them to cook. So what I generally do is I, I make out a week, a week's worth of suppers, and then I rotate them for the whole month. And it usually includes two meals that my mother uh, cooks that give up leftovers, very important. And then I use my freezer. So in October, I will make a batch of chili and I'll freeze it. I'll make a batch of spaghetti sauce. I will freeze it. Anything that I can make that gives up leftovers that I can freeze, I will do that. And then there's absolutely nothing wrong with relying on, on frozen meals. Um, we will often have, when I'm writing on deadline or that sort of thing, once a week we will have a frozen chicken pot pie or a frozen lasagna. There's nothing wrong with that. Frozen pizza is a godsend for writers. <laughs> That's all I can say. Costco, best pizza, frozen pizza in the world. And it's not forever. It's for a month. So one thing a lot of writers, myself included, really like to do is snack when they're writing. And I used to be that person, chips, chocolate, junky food. And I found that it dragged me down, especially if I was doing a full day of writing, say on a Saturday, I would sit down at my desk around 10 o'clock, start writing and write until bedtime. Snacking on junk food made me feel 
draggy and gross and tired. And I wasn't able to continue to write the way that I wanted to. So planning out your snacks, if you're a snacker, now not everybody is, but if you're a snacker, planning out your snacks is as important as planning out your, your suppers to give yourself the time. Also planning out the kind of snacks you can eat so that you're not getting say chocolate fingers all over your keyboard. Sarah has in the workbook, um, a place for, for that sort of thing. Again, strongly suggest that you get this, but having your meals planned out in advance and having say your, what you're having for supper the next night worked into your morning routine, whether it's something that you can grab out of the freezer, those crock pot dump meals are amazing for, for Nano. So making it part of your morning routine that you're, you're taking out to thaw whatever needs to thaw or dumping stuff in the crock pot or whatever in the mornings before you head out to work is going to give you extra time to write in the evenings because that's really hard. And we'll talk here in a few minutes about um, how to motivate yourself to actually write when your work day is over. We'll get to that, I promise, because I know that Renee had sent in a question about that and I promised her I would talk about it. So we will get to that. Carving out your writing time is super important. That non-negotiable, I'm sorry, family, but you don't get to have me for these two hours in the evening. And I know that for myself, as a woman, and as a mom, doing that is so freaking difficult, so difficult, because we're trained that our needs don't come before the families. But you're trying to write a book here. You're allowed to be a little selfish because it's really not selfish, but that's a whole other video. So carving out that time, finding an online sprint, a live sprint, going and watching a, a, a replay. Um, Devin Cutting, you, you've all who people who are watching this who have joined my, or uh, who come to my live sprints have heard me talk about Devin Cutting's YouTube channel. It's just Devin Cutting on YouTube. Every day there is a playlist, absolute gold during Nano because no matter when you're sitting down to write, there's going to be a live video, a live sprint that you can join. So definitely go give him a subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't forget about it. Definitely, definitely subscribe to his channel so that you have some, you always have live sprints to go to. Um, in the Heart Breathings group, of course, most of you know that there's always, every day, there's one or two, three, sometimes even four live sprints going on throughout the day and the evening. And in the Google Calendar, I will link that in the description here as well. Getting your family involved is another really, really big thing. I mean, apart from saying to them, sorry, guys, if you can't have me for two hours. But if you have children, getting them involved, help mommy or daddy or, you know, your parents set, set up their workspace, have, have, you know, have them help you bring, bring you a snack halfway through your writing sprints. Get them involved so that they don't feel left out. So they're left less likely to come knocking on your door when you're in the middle of writing. Have your your spouse or your partner, um, you know, ask them, you know, for this month, can you cook the majority of the meals so that I can squeeze in a writing sprint while you're cooking dinner? That that one writing sprint that you can squeeze in while your partner is cooking dinner, it's going to change the game for you change the game for you. And I know that like not everybody has a partner who is supportive and maybe you can't do that and it sucks, but maybe you can lock yourself in your bedroom, go out somewhere, get that time alone. Having that non-negotiable time is so important. It's hard to write over 1600 words in a day when you work full time and have family responsibilities. So in amongst all of this, you're writing your face off, you're, 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 you know, things are going really, really good. 
but you've forgotten about actually taking care of yourself. You've been sitting on a Sunday afternoon and you, you, you realize you've been sitting at your desk for six hours and you haven't moved. And now you feel like you've been hit by a truck. Self-care is more important, to, in, in my opinion, during nano than it is any other time of year. If you're anything like me and you suck at it, you have to make that as non-negotiable as your writing time. And self-care isn't just bubble baths and candles. We know this. We know this. It's, I took my vitamins today. It's, I took my meds last night. Heck, I remembered to brush my teeth this morning. Woo! You know, like it's the little things that, you know, make you better. Like that make you, that you can, so you can forget about it. So you're more focused. And don't overdo it. I don't write every day during the animal. Um, because I'm lucky enough to have those weekends, um, where I can do like, you know, writing sprints all day that I could pull seven, eight, 9,000 words on, on a weekend day. I'm lucky that I can do that. And it's okay to miss a day when you're getting together your, your, uh, plan inside of this workbook. Sarah mentions, and I'm going to knock you over the head with it too, work in some buffer days. It's November. It's flu season. COVID's still here. You don't know if you're going to get hit. You're going to get sick. One of the kids is going to get sick. Your cat ends up in the vet. Your car breaks down. Plan buffer days. That's what I didn't do last year. I didn't. I'm like... I work from home now. I can write every day. Day five, I was exhausted. I just had such a day. It was like eight hours. I didn't get up from my desk. I had clients on, on me, you know, needing stuff all day. I didn't even eat. And when my day was over, I just collapsed on my bed. And I'm like, I can't write tonight. I felt so sorry for myself. <laughs> and I gave in to the not feeling sorry for myself. Because A, I hadn't taken care of myself. Hadn't done any self-care in a very long time. I didn't have my meal, like the meal plan that I had, had already gone out the window because I didn't, um, I didn't engage with my mother to help me. I didn't ask for help. Please ask for help. It's part of self-care. And I know it's hard. I get it. I get it. Having to ask for help is so like irritating, but that's self-care. So please, please ask your loved ones, ask the people around you for help during nano. Even if you live alone and you don't have the responsibility and you come home from work, asking for help is ordering, ordering out DoorDash or, you know, skip the dishes or whatever. It's your best friend dropping you off leftovers from what their supper last night so that you don't have to cook and you can you can eat while you're writing. I, I don't suggest you eat while you're writing, like eat your meals while you're writing. I don't suggest that. Once in a while is okay during nano once in a while, but don't get in the habit. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so just also remember you're only competing with yourself here. If everybody around you by day 10 is all like, I got 30,000 words already. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. If you haven't got 30,000 words yet, so what? You're working at your pace. You're doing now the way you want to do what's good for you, what's good for your mental health, and what's right for your story. A lot of people, there's a lot of talk, I know it's last year and this year, about zero drafting during nano, which is basically what the whole thing is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a zero draft of a new project. I don't do that. I work on the book that I'm working on and still zero draft for me. But if you feel that that's not like you don't want to just regurgitate on the paper, then don't do it. Keeping in mind why, why you write. If you're halfway through nano and you're hating sitting down to write, stop, please stop. It's not worth it. It's not worth 50% off Scrivener. 
It's not. If you end up hating your story because you were trying to keep up with everybody else and you were trying to get 50,000 words in 30 days, what have you done? You've taught yourself to hate your story. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. I don't want that. You don't want that. If you're halfway through nano and it's just like, oh, I can't believe I've got to write. You find yourself getting mad about it instead of excited. Stop. It's not worth it. It's so not worth it. So now that that doom and gloom is over, let's talk about, to me, the most fun part of nano. And that's rewards. So again, back to the Prep, Sarah's Preptober workbook. There is a list in there where you can plan out a reward for yourself every 10,000 words. Now, you can do it more than that. I think about two years ago, I, I made more spaces in that section and actually went every 5,000 words because um, I was working on a novella that um, it was only going to be 50,000 words and that was it. So, and I really kind of wanted to treat myself. I felt like I deserved it and everybody deserves that. So make your decision about how often you want to reward yourself. This year I'm doing every 10,000 words. And the reason that I'm doing that is because, except for the first uh, reward, which my first reward is going to be that for the first time since COVID hit, I am, when I hit 10,000 words, I'm going to take my laptop to Chapters, which is a bookstore here in Canada that has a Starbucks inside of it. And I am going to buy myself a coffee and I am going to write there. So it's going to cost me all of like maybe $3 and, you know, do some writing. But the rest of my rewards that I have myself do have a monetary value attached to them, you know, 15 bucks here, 20 bucks there. My final 50,000 K is a new wireless keyboard. And so that's something that I, as part of my Preptober, I work that into my budget I take the money and I put it on my credit card ahead of time so that it's already paid for when I go to purchase it. Um, it doesn't always have to, you don't definitely don't have to go out and buy things. Like I like to buy myself some new washi tape and I like to, I like to, you know, go to Starbucks and, and that sort of thing. And that's my choice. It could be something as simple as binge watching your favorite TV show, taking um, a day off of nano and spending it in front of the television set. It could be taking the kids and going to the local pool. It could be, you know, I'm going to spend the day in bed reading and drinking tea. You know, pick the things that you don't normally do for yourself and make them special. I hit 20,000 words. I'm spending the day in bed with tea and books, right? Or... I'm going to sleep in till 10 o'clock in the morning as, a, as my reward to myself for hitting 20,000 words. So there's going to be a ton of videos floating around about Preptober and Nano and everything. And I would strongly suggest you, especially if you're new, I know a lot of you are new, Rita, I know that you're watching this and this is your first nano and you're a little bit nervous and you're not 100% sure what to do about it, take in as much of that as you can. Try to take in stuff from people you don't know because as great as it is to support all of us hardies and we love you to death for it, you might find something outside of the Heart Breathings group in YouTube that where you make that connection with somebody. Or if you are just comfortable with us because we're like family and you want it, you know, that's great too. But take in as much as you can, so long as you're not using it to procrastinate actually working. <laughs> Been there, done that. So just remember, I mean, anything is possible. There's been my very first year of Nano, I set a goal of 50,000 words. I was working full time and living alone. I worked in an extremely difficult job. I worked in the funeral industry and I would come home at the end of the day and it would be dark outside. It would be cold in my apartment. 
and I would come home and I'd turn on the heat. And this was, this was, you know, I didn't have a pet at the time. I didn't have Ziggy then. And it was lonely and cold and I'd wrap myself up in my blanket and I'd sit down and I'd open up my word document. And there they were, there were my characters waiting for me. And it was the most amazing feeling. I'd sit there and I did eat at my desk every night during nano that year. I didn't have anybody to please. I was living by myself. And I actually in 30 days wrote 63,000 words. And I never, never thought I would ever be able to do that. And this was before I found the heart breathings community. I had, it was just great. I had some people at work that were very supportive, which was nice. But you've got this community, you've got heart breathings, you've got, you know, your online community. You know, if, if you're lucky enough to have a writing group, a physical writing group that you go to, just lean on your community. But the number one thing about Nano, don't forget to have fun. Don't forget to have fun. This is supposed to be fun. Don't, don't, please, please, please do not put yourself in a situation where you end up hating your writing because that's not good for anybody. And the world needs your stories. I'm telling you right now, I'm looking you right in the eye because there's a few of you out there. <laughs> the world needs your stories. Nano is a tool for you to get there. Okay. So don't forget to have fun. This is going to be so much fun. We're going to have a blast together. The whole crowd of us, those of you who come to my sprints, I got so much planned. It's going to be so much fun. We've got our mid, mine and Jenna's mid nano live stream on the 12th. Um, I believe that we've planned one o'clock, not a hundred percent sure, but stay tuned for that. Um, where we're going to do a Q and a, um, we're going to just check in, make sure everybody's doing okay. You know, talk about a little bit about self-care, see where everybody is with their projects, all of the love and encouragement that you could need, it packed into an hour, okay? So definitely keep your eye out for that. Um, I will also put a link down in the description for you to come join the Heart Breathings community because community during Nano is extremely important. As I discovered in my first Nano when I didn't have community, that was a very hard one, 63,000 words. I didn't have anybody to celebrate with. I didn't even have my cat yet to celebrate with. And I was sitting alone in my apartment, had a glass of wine, <laughs> you know, so this, the community is very important during nano. Um, so, and don't forget if, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would absolutely love for you to subscribe. I will be putting out more videos like this. Um, so definitely subscribe. There will be videos coming up on, on personal branding and self-care, uh, as well as how to make money outside of your writing as a writer. So I would really, really love to have you become part of my community. Let's connect. Leave a comment down below. You can come visit my website, authormelissapower.com. There's ways to contact me through my website. If you feel like asking a question or you want me to cover um, a certain subject. So, you know, most of my, my videos are going to be around working full time and having a writing career. So if there's something you'd like for me to cover, please, please, you know, drop something in the suggestion box on my website. Um, and I would love to see you show up in my sprints Wednesday nights from six to eight Eastern and Sundays from 10 till noon. No, nine till noon. That's right. I'm doing three hours these days. I started doing it last nano and I just kept doing it because it's so much fun. So again, don't forget to have fun during nano. The most important thing about it, having fun, being in a community. I will be here if you need to talk. Drop me a line. I would be more than happy to have a chat with you. So I'm going to leave you all with that. Let's have fun getting ready for nano. And I will see you in my next video. Take care.